What's up guys, my name is Ace, and welcome back to another gun guide. This is the series where I go into great detail with all of the stats of every one of the weapons as well as their variants in Infinite Warfare. In today's episode, we're going to be moving on to the LMG category and covering the RAW. Let's get into it. Alright guys, so hopping right into the base stats of the RAW, we've got a damage profile of 3430, which means it's going to be a 3-4 to four shot kill in core game modes, and always a 1 shot kill in hardcore game modes. Our rate of fire is 491 rounds per minute, which is quite slow, but when you do factor in the fact that this takes 3 shots to kill most of the time, it's actually a pretty good rate of fire. Our time to kill is 244 milliseconds in the 3 shot kill range, and 367 milliseconds in the 4 shot kill range. Our aim down sight time is standard for LMGs and quite slow at 300 milliseconds. And we have the exact same number for our sprint out time, which is standard for LMGs, but a lot slower than all of the other weapon classes in the game. Our reload time is actually quite fast for an LMG at 2.67 seconds. Our movement speed is standard for LMGs at 90%, and we've got a magazine capacity of 70 rounds, with a total starting ammo, including the magazine that you spawn with, of 140 rounds. So overall, the RAW is a fairly standard, high damage, low rate of fire LMG. As for the ranges of the RAW, as you can see here, it's got an excellent 3 shot kill potential. Most of the gunfights you find yourself in, as long as you're not using a suppressor, are going to fall within that 3 shot kill range. But if you do pop a suppressor on there, it's still a great 3 shot kill range. You just have to be a little bit more careful about the distance that you're challenging people at. As for Particle Amp, it extends your 3 shot kill range out to a point where you're probably not going to be able to find a practical line of sight long enough to get into that 4 shot kill range. Moving on to hip spread, the RAW is quite noticeably the worst LMG for hip spread in this game, as you can see here. As for headshots with the RAW, if we're not using Faraday Slug, our headshot multiplier is a 1.1, which gives us a headshot damage profile of 3733. That means in core game modes, it's never going to reduce the number of shots it takes to kill a full health enemy when you go for headshots, so they're essentially useless when you're not using Faraday Slug. One interesting thing to point out though, is if you're playing Tactical Team Deathmatch, within its standard 3 shot kill range, the RAW will kill in just one headshot. As for Faraday Slug, this gives us a standard 1.35 times multiplier, which takes our headshot damage profile up to a 4540, and that means it's still going to be a 3 shot kill, even if they're all in the head, it's still going to be a 3 shot kill in its normal 3 shot kill range, but when you get into the 4 shot kill range, if you just mix one headshot in there, you will be reducing the number of shots it takes to kill. Moving on to recoil with the RAW, as you can see here, this is without a foregrip equipped, this is just the standard RAW, and you can see it's generally pretty good, but it does at times bounce around uncontrollably. This is one of the bigger downsides to using the RAW, because if you're trying to challenge somebody that's on cover, or they're at a bit of a distance, this uncontrollable and unpredictable recoil can sometimes screw you over a little bit. This is why, if I happen to have that extra point on my class, I will use a foregrip on the RAW, because as you can see here, it's generally much more tight you'll still run into those few occasions where you get one shot that goes kind of uncontrollably off to the side, but generally you get a much tighter grouping and fewer instances of those crazy outliers. So that's going to wrap it up for the stats of the base raw, now let's get into the variants. And first up we have a common variant called the quick shot. This one is really straightforward, it just gives you the steady weapon perk which reduces your hip spread by 20%. Moving on to the next common, this one is called the fervor. This one gives you readiness, which has been updated recently, and it now allows you to reload faster when your magazine is low. It used to be when your magazine is completely empty, now it's just when your magazine is low, and the way that the game determines whether or not it's low is basically once that reload indicator pops up in the bottom middle of your screen, that means your magazine is low. Also, you can look at your magazine count on the bottom right hand corner, and if the ammo count turns red, that means your magazine is considered low and readiness will be kicking in. Moving on to our next variant, this one's rare, and it's called the Repeater. This one gives you Headhunter as well as Stockpile, and with Headhunter, headshot kills will instantly refill your entire magazine, which is an excellent perk, especially for an LMG because they tend to take a little bit longer to reload, and Stockpile will give you increased ammo, and it does stack with extended mags. So that takes our magazine capacity up to 84 rounds, and our total starting ammo up to 168 rounds. As for our next rare, this one was actually added not too long ago, and it's called the Incision. This gives you Rupture as well as Flak, and with Rupture this is a brand new weapon perk that we haven't seen before, and it allows your energy shots to penetrate enemies and the world. And I've been getting a lot of questions about this, people are wondering what that means, like what, what do you mean it penetrates the whole world? And it is worded a little bit weird, essentially all it does is turns your energy weapon into a ballistic weapon when it comes to shooting through cover. 
So your shots no longer bounce off of cover, they just punch through cover as if they were a ballistic weapon. They aren't supercharged or anything as they go through cover, and you can't add FMJ to this gun. So it's not really that big of a deal in my mind, but one nice thing is you still maintain the characteristics of the energy weapon when it comes to refilling your ammo count from your reserve ammo. As for flak on this gun, this was really interesting. I tested in a custom game several different times against several different types of score streaks, and there was no observable difference to the amount of damage that you deal to score streaks. It took exactly the same number of shots to take down a UAV, a counter UAV, and a shock sentry. It was all exactly the same. So I really do feel that flak is completely bugged on this gun and doesn't actually work at all. Now, perhaps I'm mistaken, and maybe this is just a custom game bug or something along those lines, but based on my testing, this doesn't do anything for you. So moving on to our first legendary variant of the raw, we have the Benediction. This one gives you Gambler as well as Sharpshooter, and with Gambler, a three-player killstreak will earn you a random perk up to three times maximum in a single life, and it will expire on death. That one's pretty straightforward, kind of self-explanatory. Sharpshooter increases your damage range and will stack with Particle Amp, and it gives you a total of a 5% increase to your damage range. Moving on to the next one, we have the Headhunter, which is also a legendary variant. This one gives you Hitman as well as Stability. Now we've seen Hitman before, so I'll just gloss over it really quick here. With Hitman, you have to kill every single one of the enemy players on the other team, and it has to be a minimum of three enemy players. So if there's only two on the enemy team, for instance, at that given point in time, then it won't work for you. Also, you have to kill each one of them individually. You can't just kill the same guy three times or something like that. You have to kill every single one of the enemy players. And also, it does not have to be in one life. And as you can see here, these are the charge reductions you get based on how many enemies are in the game. The more enemies that are in the game, the more of a reduction you get off of your charge time. So that's it, man. Now let's have a look at stability. Stability is pretty straightforward. It gives you a 3% reduction to your view kick. So finally, we have what is currently the only epic variant of the raw, and this is the Liberty. With the Liberty, we get Make It Rain as well as Haste. Now with Make It Rain, the description says it gives you a double magazine size, but you can no longer reload. This isn't entirely accurate, it actually gives you more than double magazine size, it increases your magazine size to 160 rounds, rather than 140 rounds, which is what double would be. Now the description is correct when it says that you can no longer reload, and also you don't have any reserve ammo at all. Even if you're using scavenger or something like that, you don't get any reserve ammo. And on that same point, scavenger does not work with this weapon. If you're using scavenger on the Liberty, you will never pick up a scavenger pack and replenish any ammo for the Liberty. The only ways to replenish ammo for the Liberty are going to be using Fusion Mag, and that will slowly regenerate one shot at a time, or Synaptics Rewind, which will reload all of your ammo and tacticals and lethals and everything like that. Aside from that, you spawn in with 160 rounds, and good luck. As for Haste, I did a bunch of testing on this one, and it looks like we get approximately a 3% increase to our movement speed, which, if you're really paying attention, you will notice, but otherwise, probably won't notice too much. And keep in mind, this applies to movement speed only, not handling of any kind. So it does apply when you're sprinting, it applies when you're not sprinting, when you're just kind of like walking around. It also applies when you're aiming down sight and strafing. It does increase your movement speed by about 3%, but this has no impact on sprint out time or aim down sight time. That's something that I've heard a few people tell me, that it does actually reduce your sprint out time or your aim down sight time. That's simply not true. Also, I wanted to point out that you can stack Man at Arms with this Haste weapon perk. So if you take a base Raw versus a Raw Liberty, and you give both of them Man at Arms, the Raw Liberty will still be 3% faster. Overall, this is one of those guns that I feel is not quite deserving of that epic name. The base Raw already has an amazing magazine capacity of 70 rounds, and it is nice to be able to replenish ammo with Scavenger and reload. And also keep in mind, the Raw actually has a very good reload time for LMGs at just 2.67 seconds. As for Haste, like I said, if you're really paying attention, you might notice that 3% increase to your movement speed, but most of the time, it's not going to be helping in any noticeable capacity. So overall for variants, my favorite is actually the Rare Repeater variant. I really like the fact that all it takes is a headshot to completely refill your magazine, and you're reloading an entire LMG magazine, which is quite a few rounds. In addition to that, having that stockpile weapon perk is a nice little bonus. It gives you extra starting ammo, as well as an even larger magazine than it already has. As for attachments and just general things with the class setup, if you aren't using quick draw on an LMG, in my mind you're doing something wrong. So absolutely, quick draw with the raw I'm using all the time. 
Like I said earlier, I also really like running a suppressor with this gun, just because even with a suppressor, it's still got an excellent three-shot kill potential. And then sometimes if I am running a third attachment, or sometimes I might drop the suppressor, I like to go with a grip. I feel like you definitely notice that extra stability with the grip on this gun, and it's nice to reduce those instances of getting that crazy outlier shot that completely throws you off target. As for sights, I often run an ELO sight on here. It's not necessary. I think the iron sights aren't completely terrible. They're a little bit obstructive, but they aren't completely unusable. It's just if I happen to have that extra point on my class, I'll definitely pop an ELO on there. Now, the one other thing that I highly recommend running with all of the LMGs is the Gung Ho Perk. In this game, the Gung Ho Perk nearly eliminates sprint out time, and that's a big issue for LMGs at this point, especially if you want to try and move around a little bit. Now, it kind of depends on your playstyle. If you just set up with LMGs in Windows or something like that, then you probably don't need Gung Ho as much. But if you're trying to move around the map even just a little bit, that Gung Ho Weapon Perk will probably save you quite a few times. So I'd like to know in the comment section below, how do you like to run the RAW? What is your preferred variant? And what sort of attachments and setups do you like to use on your RAW classes? If you guys have missed any of the previous episodes of Gun Guides, I've already covered all of the assault rifles as well as all the SMGs. I will leave a link to the playlist down below. If you enjoyed the video, a like rating is always appreciated. And don't forget to subscribe for more if you haven't already. I'll talk to you guys next time.